Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Hedrick Hood's Q2 FI24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be no opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anuj Sonpal. Thank you, and over to you, Anuj. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anuj Sonpal from Valium Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Heritage Foods Limited. On behalf of the company, I'd like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the second quarter and first half of the financial year 2024. Before we begin, let me make a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Mrs. N. Brahmani, Executive Director, Dr. Samba Siva Rao, President, Mr. Sridip Kesavan, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. A. Prabhakar Naidu, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. J. Samba Murthy, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Upendra Pandey, CEO of Heritage Nutrivet Limited, and Mr. Omakan Barik, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. Without any further delay, I request uh, uh, Dr. Sambhasiva Rao uh, to start with his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Good morning to everyone. We are pleased to welcome you all to this earnings call for the second quarter and first half of financial year 2024. The financial results and earnings presentations have been uploaded on the exchanges, and I hope you must have had a chance to look at them by now. Let me take you through the financial performance for the quarter and the review first. Heritage Foods achieved its highest ever quarterly revenue, which on a consolidated basis stood at 979 crores representing a growth of 20% year-on-year. This was driven by continued strong growth in value-added products. EBITDA for the quarter was 47 crore rupees, which grew by 18% year-on-year. EBITDA margins were reported at 4.81%. Net profit for the quarter was 22 crore rupees, which grew by 18% year-on-year with fat margins reported at 2.29%. For the first half of the financial year 2024, our consolidated revenue grew by 16% year-on-year to 1,902 crores. EBITDA was 87 crores, representing a strong growth of 37%, with EBITDA margins improving to 4.6%. Net profit for the first half was 39 crore rupees, which has seen a significant improvement year on year of 49%. Now moving on to the performance on the operational front, the value added products portfolio witnessed strong growth of 18% year on year, contributing 258 crore rupees to the overall top line with the overall WAP contribution standing at 26.8%. The average milk procurement during the quarter under review was 1.48 million liters per day as compared to 1.46 million liters during Q2 of the previous financial year, while the average milk procurement price during the quarter stood at 43.22 rupees per liter, which increased by 2 rupees 57 paisa per liter over quarter two of the financial year 23. An average milk sale price increased by 3.89 rupees per liter year on year, 
the revenues from the sale of liquid milk for the quarter stood at 571 crore rupees, which grew by 8.5 percent year on year. Additionally, we, we successfully commissioned a new production facility at our existing big Kota plant in Chittur district of Andhra Pradesh with a capacity to process 55,000 liters per day. During the quarter, the company launched new products like premium buffalo milk with 7% fat and 50 ml and 100 ml ghee jars. Lastly, on the distribution front, we continued our efforts for enhancing our geographical reach and added 437 new distribution points in the general trade. Now the floor is open for interaction. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer. <coughs> Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Aditya from Securities Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Aditya, sorry to interrupt you, but we are losing your audio. Can you come in a better reception area, please? Yeah. Is it better now? Yes. Yeah, so my first question is regarding the gross margin. So on a few of you basis, our uh, performance prices have dropped by 1.3 rupees. So even then, our gross margins have reduced. So I know the VAP share is lower in the second quarter as compared to the first quarter, but still some benefit should have been seen in the gross margins. So if you could just elaborate what happened. And a connected question to this is, uh, there has been a sharp jump in a fat revenue as well. So is this one of the reasons why the gross margins have not expanded that much? Yeah. 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 So the second part of the question, Aditya, is uh, concerning fat sale, right? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, right. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Aditya, for this question. Uh, um, yes, uh, we, we saw that towards the end of quarter two, the raw milk procurement prices have started coming down. In fact, uh, we registered a marginal improvement uh, on account of that, uh, but most of quarter two uh, still uh, was uh, managed with high raw milk procurement prices. Uh, so uh, if you know, because uh, you know, you're looking at the quarterly numbers, you're not looking at the month-on-month -month improvement. Uh, but I can assure you that towards the end of the quarter, actually there was significant improvement in terms of cost margins. But that said, uh, a couple of other factors have impacted. For example, we know that. Uh, in the first quarter, we had value-added products contributing close to about 50%, whereas that has come down in quarter two, as is expected. That is one. And number two, we've also had uh, losses, uh, higher losses on account of uh, fat sales, uh, which amounted to about 11.8 crores uh, uh, for this particular quarter. And uh, that is uh, another factor which also uh, impacted uh, the gross margin. Uh, if I, out of this 11.8 crores, uh, we were continuing to liquidate the inventory of uh, butter that we were sitting on. You may recall that we have close to about 360 crores of inventory at the beginning of the financial year, which has substantially reduced and in, in fact it has become half uh, as we speak uh, at the close of Q2. The liquidation of butter uh, as the prices came down has happened at a loss as well. And uh, that uh, is the other factor which uh, is impacting. So. Overall business, if I look at in isolation, the continuing uh, consumer business that we are doing, that is growing, uh, and that is growing uh, strongly in profitability as well. Got it, sir. And sir, uh, if you could just talk about how the flush season started for us. So there has been reports that the rainfall has been uneven this year. So considering that, do you expect a better flush season uh, this year compared to last year? And how the procurement life is trending? Yeah, uh, as uh, this is Sam Murthy, 
So as mentioned by uh, Mr. Sridhi, uh, then uh, this uh, procurement prices started now coming down end of uh, September, from mid of September onwards. So there is a drop actually if you compare with the Q1 to Q2, Q, Q1 to Q2 there is a drop of uh, uh, procurement price at about 1 rupee. Then uh, further we are expecting further drop is going to be there in uh, Q3 as well. So procurement prices are coming up overall and the procurement volumes are uh, um, going up and uh, building and uh, so that is why overall demand side, commodity demand side, also commodity like butter, SMP, the demand also has come down. People are again converting it and the commodity price is also coming down. So because of this flip season, so hoping that the further uh, prices will uh, come down during this quarter. Q3. See, so if I could just uh, add to that, uh, the CEO has actually told you exactly what's happening in the market, but Overall for the business, the good news is that the raw milk prices are coming down. The flash season is looking very normal. Uh, this, is a, this is going to be a very normal procurement season for us, which means that's good news on the raw milk procurement side, while it's on the uh, commodity side, uh, uh, the commodity is, uh, commodities are softening. Uh, the good news is that uh, we, are, we, are like, you know, we are very low in terms of uh, stocks that we're sitting on. So we are we are actually very well poised to enter the flush season at this point in time. Okay, sir. And so how are the cattle feed prices trending? So are they also seeing a downward trend? Because if the cattle feed prices remain high, the milk prices wouldn't see a drop. So if you could just elaborate, what are the cattle feed prices trending now? Uh, I'll give first on Mr. Upendra to take this question. Yeah. So what what we see is that in next one month, one or two months time frame, uh, cattle feed prices will be stable. Uh, maybe from quarter four onwards, there may be some corrections, but uh, at least in this quarter, it should be uh, remain stable. Okay, got it. And so one last final question. Uh, so if I look at your liquid being sealed. So the last three quarters, the growth in liquid being sealed in volume terms hasn't been that great. Can you just elaborate what is leading to this? Uh, in, in fact, in uh, the first quarter, we had rec uh, reported uh, a, a, a decline in uh, degrowth in uh, milk uh, market milk volumes, uh, which has actually turned around. If you have seen that, we have reported one percentage positive growth in this quarter. So for us, actually, from a minus one to plus one is actually a good swing of about plus two percent. Uh, the 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 minus one percent that we recorded in Q1 was primarily because of sequential price increases that we have to take to correct the profitability or uh, uh, to bring it in line with the raw milk prices. Uh, that uh, market situation has stabilized, and now all the expansion that we are doing in terms of distribution is what is helping us grow. Now, uh, while we have, uh, you you should imagine that uh, a number which was at minus one percent, if we ended with a quarter quarter average of plus one percent, which means that through the month of July to September, it must have been an upward swing, right? So uh, I can very well assure you that number is double that number at this point in time. So we are continuously growing uh, milk volumes as we speak. Uh, in quarter three as well, uh, we expect that uh, trend to continue. Okay. So things are stabilizing much better now. Right. And going forward, as the procurement prices come down, uh, will you pass on some of this benefit to the customers? See, we will, uh, the, the, the usually uh, market mill price correction happens in terms of MRP, which is the consumer price. Uh, but uh, uh, the net realization of the company is uh, net of what we spend in the market to achieve our sales. So uh, because we have the comfort of margins at this point in time, we have the luxury to spend a little bit more in terms of market expansion. But as far as consumer prices are concerned, I don't think that we will be doing any correction. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Ecoris BNF, please. Yeah, hello, sir. So my first question is that your procurement is kind of not growing and it's at around 1.48 million liters per day. Uh, this is very contrary to what you said at the start of the year with 
uh, high single digit to low double digit growth in volume so can you please elaborate on this Excuse me yeah yeah see yeah, in uh, currently in the procurement actually overall procurement is about 40 without uh, overall procurement is about 14.5 lakh liter and last year it was uh, 14.62 lakh liter which is including the skim milk skim milk we purchased and converted into milk powder smp and uh, that also taken into the procurement so the difference is uh, actually we are doing and the difference basically because of that is skim milk actually this time we have not purchased and we are not converted because uh, we are having milk and we are internally our own milk we are uh, procuring it so that is why the difference actually not visible otherwise we have grown by 7 9.8% actually in the milk uh, uh, procurement volume with of skim milk and uh, coming to our own procurement own procurement yeah but yeah, and so if i look at uh, uh, the operating margin of Hiran, sorry but the volume is coming a little low no. sure sir if i look at the operating margin for our company the kind of improvement we have seen in our peers numbers and i'm not even talking the absolute numbers that some of the peers are reporting double digit margin i'm saying just the improvement in margin for some of the peers is significantly higher than ours we are still below 5% in margin and on top of that i am worried that you are saying that we have cushion of margin sir at 4 and a half percent or quarter to 5 percent i see no cushion of margin our aspirational number as we had said some months ago and even few quarters ago was 7 to 8 percent so there is no cushion of margin so can you please throw some light on this okay sure sure mr viraj uh see i'm speaking with the perspective of uh, today right and and i understand that you are looking at uh, the numbers that got reported in retrospect probably that is the reason why uh, uh the perspectives are slightly different and i shouldn't have said what i said because i'm speaking with the uh, insight that i have of, of what is happening today now let me just clarify first of all uh, you've seen that in terms of pbt uh we have uh, improved uh, uh from let's say about 2.55% in quarter 1 to about 3.14% in uh quarter 2 right which is actually a improvement of about 0.6% or uh, 60 basis points you can say that but uh if you recall in quarter 1 also we said that out of the 360 crores of inventory that we were sitting on primarily butter we had liquidated part of that and we had incurred close to about 10 crores of losses in that in terms of uh, booking in terms of mark to market prices and uh, subsequently in quarter 2 we had an additional loss of about 7.7 crores on account of the same which is actually see this this is a this is what this was a business call at a point in time when the raw milk procurement prices were going up and it was sequentially going up every every single week the prices were going up and we had showed up inventories uh, to face a difficulty here now as it turned out the uh, uh, milk production became normal starting from april may itself and uh, the prices started coming down which is why as per accounting practice we have uh, booked those losses uh, against the market mark to market prices now if i were to it is not uh, you know the our profits are just 3.14% whatever we have reported but assuming that in a continuing normal business we do not have these kind of commodities uh, going up and down as we speak now mr viraj let me assure you that we are not sitting on uh, any inventory of commodities uh, not much of inventories of commodities as well as you would have seen in the balance sheet the raw materials have come down to 180 crores now uh, assuming that uh, we take this out and this means that our profitability in q1 would have been 3.62% in terms of pbt and in q2 would have been 3.86% uh without the butter losses that we would have uh, incurred now the reason why i said i have the cushion right now is because the 3.86 also is a weighted average of the uh, profitability in quarter 2 across three months whereas as uh, the chief operating officer said some time back the prices have started coming down in the month of september which means there are profitability is sequentially improving month on month after that we are expecting the prices to further come down in uh, quarter 
which means that the quarter three should actually report much better than this. This is the reason why I said what I said. But uh, coming back to because you also mentioned about comparison with other companies, uh, you know, we we wouldn't like to compare uh, ourselves with uh, other companies because. None of the companies have, uh, you know, a comparable structure, apple to apple. Different companies are operating in different regions, which might give competitive advantage in certain times, a competitive disadvantage in certain other times. Different companies have different portfolio structure, which will also have its own advantages and disadvantages. But as far as we are concerned, what I want, I would like you uh, to to hold us accountable uh, as a company is that. We are committed to growing our value-added products, and you must have seen that in every quarter, we have uh, registered significant growth in value-added products. And uh, this quarter, again, we have grown value-added products by 18%. Good news is with raw material prices coming down sequentially, and if we are able to sustain the level of growth that we are recording at this point in time, so you know that in, in H1 itself, we have uh, registered close to about 2,000 crores of revenue. If you're going to keep this kind of very high revenue and if profits normalize, then we are going to eventually book the profits that uh, the street expects. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you so much for your explanation. Just one last thing, sir. Uh, by what time, as in five quarters, six quarters, couple of years, or what revenue target do you have at which you think you can do that 8% margin? Well, that's speculative. Uh, but let me tell you that uh, uh, in the in the coming quarters we expect the profitability to improve for sure. Uh, this is uh, this is what we are seeing uh, basis uh, our growth momentum. Uh, this is uh, basis the value added products uh, that we continue to grow every month. It is growing for us. So I know that this is actually improving. Procurement prices are coming down. But by when we will reach that eight percentage, will be totally speculative to say at this point in time. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. And that's it. Thank you. Next question is from Nana Samir Gupta. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Hey, hi, hi. Good morning, sir. And uh, just wanted to understand this uh, gross margin uh, thing a bit more uh, in detail. So you mentioned that there was a fat loss of around 12 crores this quarter. And uh, 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 if I remember correctly, in the last quarter also, we had booked a provision because of uh, the, the fat uh, prices coming down. And uh, that had affected our previous uh, quarter margins also. So unless there was a sharp markdown again in 2Q versus 1Q, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, 12 crore uh, 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 what is it? Am I? Am I? Uh, is this yes, uh, yes. yes, your understanding is absolutely correct. There was, uh, you know, sharp is a very strong uh, adjective to use, uh, but I would say that there was a further markdown in uh, quarter two. So if I could just put the numbers. We had an additional uh, uh, close to seven crores of uh, additional uh, uh, price reduction uh, in quarter two on account of this. Yes, you are right. So uh, in quarter one, as per accounting standards, we had uh, booked motional losses basis of mark to market price. But in quarter two, we actually liquidated the fat. And uh, you must have seen that close to about 72 crores is the revenue that we have booked on account of uh, fat sales as well. And uh, the the eventual loss that flowed was higher than what we had provided for. And uh, that's what is got booked. Got it, sir. Uh, just to uh, uh, get this number right, it is 12 crore losses in 2Q of FI22, uh, 2Q of this quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so it's total is 11.8 crores, yeah. but you could say that out of that about 7 crores, uh, 7.02 crores is on account of uh, bulk butter. Uh, other other losses that you're seeing is 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 our regular uh, consumer sale, which is our ghee and other things, which also we we were trying to ramp up and we 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 cut down the prices in line with the market. Okay, got it, sir. And second question, a uh, follow-up on this. 
So basically now there is a butter inventory which you said is around 180 crores on the books. And if milk procurement prices are going to go down as per expectation, there will probably be again a loss on this uh, fat inventory. So probably in third quarter also this issue will impact our margins? No, 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 no. Okay. See, there, there could be a little bit up or down, but uh, the 180 crores of inventory is on account of everything that we are holding at this point in time. Out of which uh, bulk butter, I'll give, uh, give a minute and yeah, 20 crores is the bulk butter inventory, hardly anything. And what was this number, let's say, in the start of the year, that's 20 crore? More than 100 crores, of course. Who got it, sir? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, I have a second question. Uh, I, I think a lot of it has been asked and answered. But uh, just on the outlook of milk flush, so I, I understand that the initial uh, 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 push in this direction has been good. But uh, just on the outlook on milk flush, given that, you know, there is a larger rainfall deficit in southern peninsula area, where which is the primarily the region, region where we operate, uh, uh, are we still very confident of seeing a uh, normal milk flush this year? Yeah, the procurement side overall it is good. Now, every all the parts of uh, our operating area, the procurement is increasing. And uh, <coughs> prices also, as we mentioned, that uh, it's uh, coming down. And uh, everywhere our uh, growth is there in the procurement area. There is no uh, thing that, no, there, uh, there is no procurement in... Uh, uh, south or uh, other parts, so everywhere it is increasing because of uh, good rains, actually good monsoon we had and uh, continuous rains. Got it, sir. That's it from me. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone. I will come back in the queue for any follow-ups. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Risha Mehta from Green Edge Wealth Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so again, on the fact. Uh, uh, sales, right? So historically, if I recall correctly, over the last several years, we've all booked fat losses annually. Right? So you could call out what have been your fat losses over the last sorry, five, six, sir. seven years. Uh, we are losing your audio in between. Okay. Uh, is it better? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Risha, we got the question. Uh, we got the question. We got the question. Can you allow us some time and we'll come back to you on that? Uh, Risha is asking, what has Hello? This season is not is a bit different from earlier years because we have accumulated the, the fat stocks over a period of seven, eight months and disposed in this quarter. That, that has caused the one-time bulge of this uh, loss. Otherwise, it would be one year it will be a little lower, one year it will be a little higher over a period of five, six years, ranging from, let's say, 20 crores to 40 crores per annum kind of loss. Oh, so you, yeah, yes. yeah. It, it ranges from 20 to 45 per annum. Different years behave differently depending on the milk availability, commodity prices. And but at actual year-wise, we will take some time to pull out and give you. And, and this year it is only... only only looking like that because you know we we just went through a very high procurement uh, price uh, and then suddenly it's all come off. Uh, you know it, it's been like you know the the turnaround in terms of prices has been significant, which is why it is so starkly standing out. Right, but if we look at your historical average of 20 to 45 crores uh, of losses annually, right? So I think this year also we are pretty much on track to do that, right? So maybe we can expect a little bit of more fat losses in the coming two quarters? No, it, it, it was not booked in the earlier periods as the stocks were sold in a short time of one month. Okay, okay. okay so Right. So in H2, basically Q3 and Q4, do we expect a lot more of fat losses, like to the tune of let's say 10 to 20 crores, to put together? Uh, see, uh, we do not have at this point in time any more uh, butter that we need to dispose of. Whatever we are having is, uh, you could say that the input is uh, pretty much matching with output because we are continuously liquidating whatever surplus fat we have. 
Uh, that said, I wouldn't like to speculate in terms of, you know, what would be the change in prices and what kind of losses we will have. Uh, of course, our intention is to sell all our consumer packs in prof profit and our consumer uh, sale of uh, whether it is heat or butter and all are growing uh, month on month basis. So if that happens and if we are able to sell most of our packs in terms of consumer uh, packs, then uh, the losses would be very minimal. Uh, but if that doesn't happen and if you have to liquidate and if it's a falling market, uh, then we might continue to have a little bit of losses booked uh, month on month going forward as well. But we will not have, like uh, President said uh, shortly, uh, uh, presently, uh, we, don't, we don't have the accumulated nine months or ten months of uh, fats to dispose of anymore. It, it's only whatever transaction is happening on a month on month basis. Understood, very clear. And second, on the uh, milk sales growth, right? It's been very separate at around 1% volume growth, right? So is this because, uh, uh, you know, uh, because of the high milk inflation over the last 15 months, do you see consumer sentiment being muted, at least on the liquid milk front? And that is why also, you know, we may have had to take more promotions and higher trade margins to boost top line growth there, and which in turn has impacted our gross margins? No, 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 no. In fact, actually, milk margins have improved tremendously. Uh, let me assure you that, you know, we are not, uh, whatever we are spending in terms of driving milk growth is uh, uh, in line with what we have always spent. So there's no excess spend there. Uh, but the numbers, volume growth have come down. Asking about string collection. Yeah, the numbers have come down because of two uh, reasons. Number one is because of uh, prices going up and consumer appetite to consume. Had come down. Number two is we had achieved some of the NR increases by reduction of pack sizes. We call it uh, a shrinkflation effect. And uh, many of the packs we have actually shrunk by almost uh, 10 or 15 percent, which means that the number of packs that the consumers are buying remains the same, but volumes have shrunk by about 10, 15 percent. So a combination of that is what has caused uh, the volumes to come down. And uh, now we are. Uh, uh, growing uh, the numbers, like you, know, you could say about upwards of 2% is the kind of volume growth that we are seeing. But in terms of transaction growth, uh, most of the packs are growing in a very healthy double-digit transaction growth. Got it. And uh, also, on your, uh, what was your milk procurement price in Q2 of last year? Got it. It's 43.22 right now, right? Yes. Yeah. And lastly, on the uh, EBITDA margins, right? So uh, I think we had the kind of uh, embarked on that journey of reducing uh, 10% of total cost or uh, thereabouts, right, by uh, gaining efficiency, trying to reduce sales and distribution costs, and also reducing conversion costs. So where are we in that journey out of the ambition of 10% cost reduction? Uh, how much have we achieved and how much more room is left? Uh, uh, we are progressing on that. Uh, several initiatives are now uh, operating uh, full-blown, and uh, we are uh, you, know, you should say that we are about, uh, uh, we must have covered about one third of the journey in that. Right. And the balance journey is to be uh, covered over the next uh, six months or 18 months or what kind of a time period? No, at any point in time, we have several projects that we are running uh, in terms of value creation initiatives, uh, which uh, many of them will come online in Q3 as well. Uh, so that's a, that's a continuous process as far as we are concerned. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Rasha. I'll request one follow-up question. Thank you. I request all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Yes. Pratik, sorry, but your audio is not coming clearly. Is this any better? Yes, slightly better. Thank you. 
uh, uh, one percent of each. Uh, so uh, when we look at our on the supply side, the spending. So, Pratik, sorry, but uh, again, your voice is breaking. May I request you to come back in the question queue? Sure. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anushka Chipnis from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Uh, hi. Yeah, I just had one question that I asked. What is the share of cow milk and buffalo milk procurement in this quarter? 81.19. Cow 81. Buffalo milk. Mm -hmm. Uh, just for this quarter, I wanted to know what was the share of cow and buffalo milk procurement. Because sir, roughly around 80 20 is the ratio, 81 19 yes. as we speak for uh, quarter two. Sorry? 81 19. You could say roughly 80 20 ratio. 80 20. Okay, thank you so much. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Next question is from Nan of Costa Pavaska from Share Khan Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. First, on uh, value added products, what was the contribution of third uh, for this quarter and uh, what was the growth uh, on year on year basis? And my second question is uh, should we expect the contribution of value added products? Uh, to improve in the quarter three, considering uh, the question and you know uh, the overall mix might improve because the fat itself would be lower than the stock. So considering that, that also even the mix should uh, uh, improve in Q3. Okay, thanks, thanks for the question. So let me answer the second question first. See, we will continue to drive high growth of value added products as we go. Uh, you know, uh, continuing forward, you could expect us to continue to drive value-added products growth at a very high teens level, 18, 19, 20 percent, this kind of growth you could expect, and this is what we are working on. Now, uh, the ratio of uh, value-added products in terms of their contribution to overall revenue will be a function of other things as well, right, which is either the revenue, here you have seen that we have taken higher revenue increase in milk compared to value-added products. So contribution per se of value added products might have might be looking a little suppressed. Or if because of festive period, fat sales might go up and hence contribution might look a little muted. But value added products will be the one that will continue to drive growth of the revenue of top line for our company. And uh, the first question was contribution of curd. Uh, curd has grown at uh, ten and a half percent for us uh, in this particular quarter. And uh, 16 percent, 16 percent. Yeah, so curd has grown by 16 percent. Overall uh, value, uh, overall value added products uh, have grown by 18 percent. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so my question is about. Sorry, I here. Yeah. There's a lot of airy sound coming from the land. Can you speak through the handset? Is it better now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my uh, second, uh, my uh, last question is on the capacity expansion you just suggested. The, uh, the, so I just want to understand, you know, how it is going to help you and whether we might see some efficiency coming up with this, uh, you know, expansion. Yeah. So, see the uh, the capacity expansion has uh, is, is 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 a net addition of about twenty five thousand liters because we have also decommissioned certain capacities and re reorganized uh, towards markets which we are looking at expanding. So, uh, this particular plant where we have added uh, or commissioned new capacities is uh, in Chitu district, place called B Kotakota. Uh, which gives us access to the uh, Royal Sima market uh, or the market uh, you can imagine that lies between Tirupati and Bangalore. That's the market where uh, which uh, this plant would be catering to. This again is uh, a part of our growth strategy in terms of uh, markets that we are focusing on. Right. So in that context, uh, the farmer addition, what we normally uh, you know uh, uh, talk about, uh, just a comment on that. You know, where are we currently, and what is our target on that front? 
Uh, did you mean uh, farmer addition? In the sense, uh, uh, the procurement, uh, in terms of procurement of milk, uh, you know, from uh, uh, the uh, suppliers. Yeah. Have... Already we are having procurement in that area. We are already procuring it. We have just uh, created that uh, packing facility, third production facility over there. This is more about processing that and packing capacity, capacity, not procurement mm -hmm. capacity in that area. Oh, what okay. explained in Okay, thanks. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Nair of Wonder from Alpha Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just have uh, one question. Uh, being uh, what kind of procurement uh, number do we look by, say, FY26, two years out? See, we, we are uh, sometimes back we had mentioned that our ambition is to grow. Uh, at a rate of 15, 16 percentage year on year. And uh, we expect uh, half of that uh, growth to be driven by volumes and half of it to come from uh, price uh, or improve, uh, shift towards value added products, right? Now, which means that uh, uh, we will have to continue growing our procurement volumes in line with the volume requirements uh, of our company, which means that it will be uh, either in high single digits or uh, like, uh, you know, uh, low double digits. So you can say about 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 percent kind of growth we'll have to sustain uh, to fuel this growth. And uh, we are well on track for that. And uh, what kind of uh, capex number do we look for, say, for FI 25, 26? Yeah, so see, we have uh, we we have been uh, tracking around 100 crores year on year, and uh, you know we we don't uh, we think that that's that's uh, uh, that's sufficient to fuel the organic growth that we are seeing uh, or that we are anticipating. Okay, and one last question. Uh, I think we have been doing really well on the value added product side. Uh, if you can just talk about some initiatives which are really putting this kind of a good because I think for the last two three quarters year on year we've been doing a decent number. So if you can just speak about what has been driving this kind of a growth. Uh, uh, several things. Uh, see, first of all, I think that we are uh, committed to uh, offering the best product that is there in the market. Right, and which which starts with understanding the consumer in terms of uh, continuously improving our product quality, uh, and and this is not just in terms of the inherent product quality, but also the packaging and the uh, and and the presentation of the product to the consumer. So that is uh, one thing that we have uh, been continuously working on in the last uh, many quarters. We have actually improved uh, whether it is our uh, curd, paneer, ice cream. Many of these products have gone through multiple rounds of revisions, and this is a continuous process at our uh, end. Secondly, uh, in terms of uh, distribution expansion, uh, is something that we are uh, uh, continuously focused on. Uh, so while uh, the, the uh, you could call uh, the uh, core of our business, which is the fresh products, is uh, primarily driven through traditional channels, whether it is uh, heritage parlors, or uh, uh, heritage distribution net distributor network, uh, we have uh, added uh, or we have invested significantly in growing uh, the distribution through uh, grocery channel and many other uh, emerging channels such as e-commerce and quick commerce and all of that in the last uh, several quarters. So uh, whether it is in terms of adding uh, of distributors, uh, which uh, you know has today we have close to about 50,000. Outlets reach uh, in the grocery channel. Uh, we have also added uh, close to about 160 plus uh, heritage happiness points. Uh, we have uh, heritage happiness points that are distribution centers, which neighborhood distribution centers, which act both as a um, retail store as well as a redistribution center. Uh, we have also expanded uh, our presence across e-commerce, quick commerce, and modern trade channels. Uh, uh, we have now, even in cities like uh, 
uh, Delhi and CR and all of that, you can you can pretty much buy most of our products or value added products on whether it is Big Basket and Zepto and Blinkit and all of that. So those are all the things that is driving growth for us as far as value added products are concerned. Uh, so what could be the percentage revenue that you're getting from e-commerce and modern trade channels? Uh, close to about 10.5% is the revenue that we get from this channel. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. I'll come back with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next follow-up question is from Naya Ramesh from Retail Investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is uh, you have sold uh, third growth at 16% of value. What is the volume growth you had at this point? Uh, it's 10.6%. Uh, uh, because I understand third brand it is going uh, in the market. Since people are more, uh, moving more to buying curd instead of uh, buying milk, I heard from you guys only in the previous calls, in previous quarters. Is it uh, uh, our driven growth or it is a market growth, the 10.5%? Uh, okay, so it's both. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I really don't know exactly what the market is growing at. Definitely there is momentum in the market. Uh, because uh, the packaged curd consumption is on the rise, uh, and uh, uh, which is primarily driven by some of the leading brands, right? Which also includes heritage somewhere right at the top. Uh, okay. So it, it's a function of uh, uh, a bunch of brands, including heritage, driving this growth, and consumer adoption is happening. Okay. And the second thing is on butter. I mean, uh, I, I know so many questions came in this call. Only thing is how much metric ton of butter we sold in uh, one Q1, 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 Q1. Uh, so the month, How much did we sell? 1978 tons. Yeah. Close to mm -hmm. 2000. Yeah, one Roughly close to 2,000. Close to. So uh, the same question, uh, Samir had asked you a question. When ten and a half course, uh, I did not get much back on it. In last quarter, as I remember. So this quarter, you are saying uh, we have booked 11.8 crore loss. After setting of that provision, what we have made in Q1, or is it additional to that uh, provision, that 11 crore? So, so, so you, the, the two numbers are different. See, 10 crores that we mentioned in Q1 was notional loss on butter stocks. That was not the fat loss. Yes. Because the fat loss was slightly higher than that uh, because we also sell uh, in consumer packs, ghee and uh, butter and all that. Right? Okay. And uh, in the, the 11.8 crores that you're calling out in Q2 is the total fat loss, out of which only 7 crores is on account of uh, butter. Uh, the balance is... Uh, in addition to 10 crore loss of Q1, you're saying 7 crore additional loss in Q2. Uh, you could say that cumulatively in H1, we might have had to book a, a loss of about 16 and a half, 17 crores on account of the butter prices coming down. Okay, understand. And can't we Which is, yeah. Sorry. So my follow-up thing was, can't we use this butter as our advertising strategy uh, for milk and curd or some value added? We can use our butter or fat products for our advertisement uh, instead of spending in other advertisements? Just a uh, suggestion or something. Can we use... Uh, no, no, it's... It's a, it's a good suggestion, but see, at the end of the day, we have to balance everything, right? See, what is not visible here is the revenue growth that we are seeing in terms of our consumer packs. So we also sell 100 gram, 200 gram butter, like uh, you see the Amul butter, right? So if you come to our core markets, whether it is Hyderabad or uh, Bangalore and uh, Chennai and all, you will see strong presence of heritage butter on all shelves, retail shelves. Uh, the consumer pack of butter for us is growing very strongly. But, however, 
uh, in a month, we sell close to about 60, 70 tons of uh, uh, butter in consumer packs. Now, 60 or so, which is about roughly, you could say about two tons, close to two tons per day is what we sell. Now, even if we sell, even if we grow that by 100 times, it is still not like, you know, I hope you understand, right? The, the mismatch in terms of numbers. So we are growing, the consumer packs are growing for us at in very high double digits or even in some cases, even triple digits. But still those numbers are not significant enough to compensate this kind of huge inventory that we might have. Okay, understood. Thanks, thanks for the answers. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Avinash from NAFA Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. So I noticed that your value added account has grew at 18%, while your milk has grown by 9%. Could you just give us a breakup on uh, margins from each of these uh, Q1, Q1, and Y? Yeah. Thank you. So you can be here asking for margins of milk and value added products. Um, Ready, sir? Yes, sir. Ebita margin. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Prabhaka. Uh, EBITDA, uh, milk, two to, two, two to EBITDA margin of milk is 5.36%. The value added product margin is 8.34%. Curd, curd, personally curd, 7.92%. Uh, buttermilk, 12.74%. Ice cream, 11.67%. Overall, 4.37%. Uh, Thank you. Uh, similarly, why on Sorry? Uh, year on year, what was the margin? Two one. Yeah. Okay, these are EBITDA percentages that we said. We, we were not talking about the change. No, this is EBITDA percentage. Oh, kind of thing. Thank you. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Oh, good morning, sir. My first mm -hmm. question is on the uh, procurement volume. So you talked about in order to achieve 15 to 16 percent overall company level growth, we need uh, eight high single digit or low double digit kind of procurement growth. Uh, at the same time, you talked about uh, the impact of inflation that although the number of packets are growing at double digit, but the volume growth is uh, very low single digit, one, two percent only. So if you can talk about from which quarter, is it like Q3, Q4, or it will happen only next year, uh, do we see this high single digit kind of uh, growth in procurement? No, see, this... There are two two different things. I think, uh, see, one, I was responding to the gentleman who asked about uh, what will be the procurement in 2026. Okay, so I was, when I said the high single digit or low uh, double digit, the number was, you know, you could say, uh, you know, long, with a long term perspective, right? Now, that means that, uh, you know, the, the, it doesn't mean that every quarter or every month we'll be growing at that rate. Right? The procurement uh, will be growing or uh, slightly growing less uh, based on the cyclicity of the uh, milk uh, supply that is there. Uh, that is so. That's the uh, raw milk supply side. The second question, what you're asking about, is the growth, right? Even though milk is growing at one percent, value-added products are growing uh, strongly in double digits in terms of volumes also. Right, uh, just now you heard that curd itself is growing at 10.6%. So overall, our requirement of solids or milk uh, per se is continuing to grow. So we'll have to bring in the milk uh, to cater to that demand. That growth is only going up for us. Uh, so uh, there was a small tapering of growth at the time when we took the consumer prices up. For the last several months, consumer prices are stable, or rather the increase in consumer prices have been marginal. Uh, and uh, we continue our distribution expansion and our volume growth on the market side is continuing to grow, which means that going, looking forward, we will require the raw milk uh, uh, in that, at that rate. Mm -hmm. so, what kind of volume growth do you see in procurement? 
so sir uh, that's that's what i was saying that you know we we will need to grow our raw milk procurement at the rate of 8 9 or 10% uh to sustain the market requirement uh, of growth because market will also grow at that rate right and of sustain over a long period in time i mean it may not be i may not be talking about one quarter or two quarters here I'm talking about slightly longer perspective to look at it that's the kind of growth that we'll have to drive both in procurement as well as sales side okay so h1 maybe was an aberration and you are saying maybe h2 onwards we'll see that uh, kind of growth because we need this growth to continue our growth in value added products yeah okay uh, okay h1 was a long period so you should look at q2 and q1 separately but that's fine sure sir uh, my second question is on the uh, value added side so uh, out of the uh, 260 crore kind of sales we did uh, if you can talk about the non cut portfolio so how are uh, you are talking about margins but in terms of growth uh, which are the segment example paneer ice cream which are doing quite well for us and also sir in terms of the margin you talked about in uh, different value added products so it seems much lower than uh, what other players make i understand we don't have this scale yet maybe in some of the products like ice cream and all those things so on the whole basket uh, value added uh, if this kind of growth continue uh, do you think say in the next year or year after that we can see a good double digit kind of margin on this value added portfolio rather than high single digit Sure. So uh, I'll, yeah. I'll take the second part of the question first, and then uh, we'll give you the growth numbers we are seeing in uh, the chief operating officer will call out some of the growth that we are seeing in some of the products. Maybe not all the products, but some of the products, right? So uh, see, in terms of margins, uh, we have uh, in most of the time value-added products will roughly deliver uh, double the margins of milk, right? now uh, while we took uh, milk prices up corrected the milk prices in line with the raw milk uh, price increase uh, we did not do so much of correction in the value added products because we are still continuing to drive volume growth in value added products right which is why the gap between value added products and milk uh, in terms of percentages have come down a little bit like while milk uh, ebitda is close to 5.6% value added products is about 8.5% so uh but uh, that 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 that's at this point in time uh we we are in a very strong position as far as value added products are concerned and at any point in time we can make those price corrections and all of that and that uh, ebitda will uh, uh consequentially improve as we go forward so that that uh, that's just a point in time and uh, the idea is to bring more and more contribution from value added products so that weighted average ebitda of the company grows and moves towards the 8 percentage margin which is our north star yeah now while well, and yeah. this uh, value added products other than the third uh, parmeer is growing by 28 percent and uh, uh, ice cream uh, is growing by 45 percent and the total drinkables uh, it is growing by 28 percent so there is a good growth uh, in the value added products other than third as well Sure, sir. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Next follow-up question is from the line of Aditya from Securities Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the follow-up. So, what was the procurement uh, price uh, at the start of the quarter in July, and what were they at the end of the quarter in September? Q1 uh, July, July to September. We're trying to see how much drop. Okay, <laughs> we we may not ready. Yeah, ready yet. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, Q1 it is there. Q1. Uh, Q1 close, right? Yeah. Average, yeah, average, average. It's July, I think. Beginning of Q2. Yeah. We're trying to see July to September. How much price would have come down from no, no. beginning to end of quarter? See, overall Q1 to Q2, one rupee thirty-six paisa per liter has come down. 
probably uh, delay to then uh, yeah let it we yeah, will have to come back to you on that uh, but you could say that uh, there was uh, a, a good decline from july to september got it and so this 43.5 which we gave in our uh, press release so that is for the average of the quarter right that is right okay and so my last question is your voice is breaking aditya we are unable to hear you hello yes yes sir uh, that is your sorry but we are losing your audio can you please come in a better reception area hello am i audible now so we can hear you but then your voice is breaking is it better now yes yeah so the spread for the which we are uh, making on liquid mint and that product like curd now are we back to pre covid levels or at a level which we need to normalize the environment or we are still some time away ंग Okay. 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 Thank you. 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 So we look forward to interact with you again after the next quarter. Thank you all. Thank you very much. On behalf of Heritage Foods Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.